Welcome everyone to the deep dive. Get ready, because today we're looking at something that might just reshape how you see our little corner of the universe. Imagine looking out into space, uh, not just seeing the usual suspects, the planets and stars we know, but suddenly something else, like a message in a bottle, but drifting in from, well, from another star system entirely. It's this incredible feeling we're exploring today. We're talking about a brand new discovery, uh, an interstellar object. Its official name is 3i Atlas. And look, this isn't just some random space rock. It feels more like a, a messenger from the wider cosmos. So in this deep dive, our mission is to unpack how it was found, what makes it so special, and you know why its silent journey through our solar system is actually a pretty big deal for how we understand the universe and maybe even ourselves. Okay, so first things first. Do we even spot this thing? A fleeting visitor from so far away. Well, the stage was really set by the ATLS Survey Telescope, NASA funded. Right, ATLS, it's, it's basically like a cosmic neighborhood watch constantly scanning the sky. Exactly. And the first report came on July 1st, 2025 from Rio Hurtado in Chile. Uh-huh. And almost at the same time, independently, the ATLA system up in Hawaii picked it up too. That's pretty cool coordination. Or maybe just good timing. Well, what's really amazing is how quickly astronomers piece together its past. It shows you how collaborative astronomy is these days. They dug back into archive data, uh, professionals, amateurs, everyone pitching in. Ah, so looking for earlier glimpses of it. Precisely. They found pre-discovery images going back as far as June 14th, pulled from different ATLA's telescopes, even the Zwicky Transient Facility. Wow, ZTF. That thing sees everything that changes in the night sky. It's incredible, really. A global effort tracking this tiny point of light. And you could feel the buzz almost immediately, right? It wasn't kept under wraps. Not at all. People were excited. Yeah, I saw U.S. astronomer David Rankin <laughs> shared an image on Bluesky on July 2nd. Like, right away. And the Virtual Telescope Project even did a live stream the next day, July 3rd. So everyone could get a look. Shared wonder happening live. Okay, so it gets its official designation, 3IAT LAS, from the Minor Planet Center. It's Cosmic Passport, basically. Uh-huh. So what is this thing? What are the basics we know about it? Well, the classification is Comet, which is interesting for an interstellar object. Why is that particularly interesting? Because it tells us something about its composition. Jonathan McDowell from Harvard Smithsonian pointed out that the uh, the fuzziness around it suggests it's mostly ice, not mostly rock. Okay, so like a dirty snowball, but from another star. Pretty much. And that fuzziness, the coma, gives us clues about where it formed, what materials are common in other star systems. It's like a sample return mission, but it came to us. And it's big, right? The estimates I saw are pretty substantial. Yeah, the current thinking is roughly 10 to 20 kilometers wide. 10 to 20 kilometers, that's... That that could make it the largest interstellar object we've ever detected, couldn't it? Potentially, yes. Significantly larger than Umamua or Borsov appeared to be. That kind of challenge is what we thought, maybe. That these things would mostly be small. It certainly hints that larger wanderers might be out there, even if it turns out to be on the smaller side of that estimate, maybe just very icy and reflective. Its brightness is still remarkable. Okay, important question. Any danger? Is it coming anywhere near us? Ah, good question. And the answer is a clear no. Absolutely zero threat to Earth. Phew. Okay. Richard Moisel, he's head of planetary defense at ESA, confirmed that. Its path takes it deep through the solar system, yeah, but it passes just inside Mars's orbit. Inside Mars, okay. Its closest point to the sun, perihelion, is around October 30th, about 1.4 astronomical units out, so 130 million miles or so. And from Earth. It stays even further from us, at least 1.6 AU, which is about 150 million miles away. We're safe, just watching it go by. Watching it go by very, very fast. The speed is staggering, over 60 kilometers a second. That's right, more than 60 kilometers relative to the sun. That's what, 152,000 miles per hour? It's absolutely hauling. And that speed. Yeah. That's the key, isn't it? That's what tells us its origin story. Exactly. That speed is its interstellar calling card. Unlike our own comets and asteroids, which are basically trapped by the sun's gravity in elliptical orbits. Right, they keep coming back around. This one's on a hyperbolic trajectory. Its velocity is too high for the sun to capture it. So it's not bound to the sun, it just flew in and it's flying out again. Precisely. As Moisel said, it's coming from interstellar space and flying off to there again. That confirms it. It's not one of ours. Like a tourist just passing through our solar system. You could think of it that way. Jonathan McDowell had a neat theory on how these things might form and get loose. Oh, yeah. He suggested, you know, these icy bodies form with stars in their outer systems, maybe like 
our Oort cloud. Okay. And then maybe another star passes nearby, gravitationally nudges it just enough to free it. So it goes rogue. Goes rogue, yeah. Wanders the galaxy for maybe millions, billions of years, and this one just happens to be passing us now. It's kind of mind-bending. And it's only the third time we've actually detected one of these. Confirmed, anyway. Only the third. It wasn't that long ago. These are just theoretical. I remember Umuamo back in 2017. That thing was wild. So strange. People were talking aliens. Yeah. That one definitely sparked the imagination. Its shape, its movement. Very unusual. And then two at Borisov in 2019. That one looked more like a standard comet, right? It did. More familiar in a way. It helped confirm that, yes, interstellar comets exist and can look like our own. But now 3ILS. What makes this one stand out compared to the other two, besides uh -huh. maybe the size? Well, Mark Norris at the University of Central Lancashire pointed out, it seems to be moving considerably faster than both Umumua and Borisov. Faster even than them. Wow. Yeah. So its speed and its potential size really make it distinct, even in this very small club of interstellar visitors. It feels like, okay, Umumua was a shock. Borisov, maybe a coincidence, but 3i at less. This feels like it confirms a pattern, like you said, a pathway. It really does. It shifts the perspective from anomaly to phenomenon. These things are likely arriving more often than we realized. So let's talk implications, because this is where it gets really fascinating, right? Beyond just spotting it. Absolutely. This is where it gets really interesting. For scientists, these objects are an incredible gift. How so? They offer a chance, a rare chance, to study material directly from outside our solar system without launching a mission that would take centuries. Like interstellar delivery service. Exactly. A pristine sample from another star's neighborhood brought right to our doorstep. We can analyze its light, figure out its composition, learn about the chemistry happening around other stars. Which leads to maybe the biggest question of all, panspermia. Mm -hmm. The idea that life or its ingredients could travel between stars. It definitely fuels that speculation. It's a long-standing idea, but seeing these objects makes it feel more plausible, perhaps. Mark Norris mentioned that, right? If we found something like amino acids on one of these. Yes. If we detected precursors of life, such as amino acids on such an object, as he put it, it would seriously boost the idea that the conditions, the building blocks for life, aren't unique to our solar system. So the big question, are the ingredients for life universal? Are they maybe scattered everywhere by objects like this? It's one of the most profound questions these discoveries raise. Is life a likely outcome across the cosmos? Wow. Okay, stepping back from the pure science for a second. Yeah. There's a philosophical angle too, isn't there? Oh, absolutely. For me, this kind of discovery, it touches the soul, not just the telescope lens. How do you mean? It shatters that old image of our solar system as this isolated island, this fortress. Yeah. Instead, it shows us we're more like a harbor open to the interstellar ocean with ships constantly sailing past, sometimes docking briefly. The outside world is always sort of knocking, peeking in. Silently passing through. It does make you feel small, in a way. Humble, yeah. There's a real sense of humility. This object, 3 Aelas, it's completely unaware of us. Just cruising along on its multi-million year journey. Maybe it's past countless other stars. And we're just observers. Curious, yes, but right now, pretty much helpless to do anything but watch. <laughs> And we can't even send a probe to catch up with it, right? It's moving too fast. Its trajectory is too unpredictable now. Unfortunately, no. Not with current technology and the late notice. Sending a mission to intercept it just isn't feasible. Which, you know, adds to the mystery. We get this brief glimpse, and then it's gone back into the dark. A silent witness to its journey. So, three confirmed visitors. But there could be many more we just haven't seen. Oh, definitely. The theoretical models are suggesting there could be thousands, maybe even a... Uh, up to 10,000 interstellar objects passing through our inner system at any given time. 10,000. Mostly small ones, presumably. Most likely much smaller and dimmer, yes. Making them incredibly hard to detect with current surveys. But I could change soon, with new telescopes coming online. That's the exciting part. The Vera C. Rubin Observatory in Chile. It's a game changer. Its ability to scan the sky so deeply and quickly. It could start finding these things regularly. The hope is, yes, it could soon be finding these dim interstellar visitors every month, maybe even more often. Wow. From three in several years to maybe one a month. That completely changes the picture. It really does. We're moving from these being rare curiosities to potentially a regular part of understanding our solar system's traffic. So wrapping this up, 
<laughs> What's the big takeaway for everyone listening? What does this all mean? Well, I think it means the night sky isn't just this static backdrop of familiar stars and planets anymore. It's more dynamic. Much more. It's a stage, uh, a parade ground, you could say, for travelers from other star systems, each one carrying clues, stories from far away. And we're the generation that gets to see this parade starting. We have the front row seats. We are incredibly lucky, yeah. It reminds us the universe is full of surprises, far more interconnected than we ever really thought. Okay, so before we go, a final thought for you to ponder. Consider this. If these interstellar visitors are commonplace, maybe thousands are drifting through right now. Think about the implications over billions of years. Okay. How much material from other star systems might have rained down on the early planets, including Earth? How could that constant silent exchange of chemicals, of maybe even complex molecules, have influenced the conditions for life here? So not just delivering ingredients once, but maybe a continuous mixing across the galaxy. Exactly. What does that constant interchange mean for how life got started and how common it might be elsewhere? Something to really mull over. Definitely something to think about. Well, that's all the time we have for this deep dive. If you found this journey to the stars as fascinating as we did. Please subscribe to The Deep Dive for more explorations like this, and we genuinely want to hear what you think about 3ILS and its implications. Share your thoughts with us online.